Hi everybody and welcome to Virtual Sunday School. Well, where we left off last time, God had given Moses the command to go back to Egypt and to free his people. So Moses comes down off of Mount Sinai and he heads off to Egypt to release the people from slavery. Now, what do you think the Pharaoh is going to say when Moses gets there? Sure, take all my people that are helping me to build my pyramids and all that and just take them, no problem. That is not at all what happened. After all, there's Moses standing in front of the Pharaoh with a staff, a piece of wood. And the Pharaoh is thinking to himself, I've got entire armies, I've got wizards, and you're going to take your staff? And that's going to convince me to let all these people go? I don't think so. So Pharaoh decides, I'll go ahead and test Moses and see what he's got. So he says, All right, Moses, what do you got? And Moses takes his staff and he throws it on the ground and it instantly becomes this venomous snake. So the Pharaoh says, This is the best that you can do. He snaps his fingers and he looks over at his magicians and they take off their top hats and they take their staffs and they drop them on the ground and they become snakes. But Moses's snake eats the rest of them. And so now the Pharaoh thinks to himself, hmm, maybe there's something here. So you're probably thinking, why didn't the Pharaoh just have Moses beheaded and be done with this whole thing? I mean, he's throwing snakes at him and everything like that. But remember, Moses now was the adopted brother of the Pharaoh. And what makes Moses special? He had his foot in both worlds. So he had one knowing the palace life and how it was, but also he was a Hebrew. So he lived the life of a Hebrew slave also. So anyway, the Pharaoh decided that he's not really going to do anything about Moses. I mean, what's Moses going to do? Throw snakes at people? But God is not one to be ignored. And so what he did over the next several weeks, together with Moses, is that he really annoyed the Pharaoh with 10 plagues. Now, the first four of those plagues were kind of an annoyance. Well, the first one was that he turned the river into blood. But hey, we turn the Chicago River green every year, so eh, no big deal. The next ones were frogs and gnats and flies. Well, that wasn't too bad. Well, and guess unless you're in Scotland and you get hit with midges. Now, midges is a whole nother thing. But these first four were just annoyances. Well, the Pharaoh doesn't respond even to these first four. So God says, okay, stand by. I got something else for you. So what does he do? The next four are really severe. First, he kills all the livestock. Next, he infects all the people with boils, which are like horrible and painful pimples. And then he sends a hailstorm. Now, I know what you're thinking. A hailstorm in the desert, that'd actually be pretty nice. We could make like snow cones and stuff like that, and especially be a nice relief covered in all those boils. But no, it was actually flaming balls of fire that caught everything on fire. And if that wasn't bad enough, he then sends locusts, which now eats all of the crops. So now you've got all of these poor Egyptian people who are like, my cattle is dead, I can't eat steak. There's balls of fire coming down from the sky and locusts are eating all of my crops. And on top of that, I'm covered in boils. And what does God do for the ninth plague? He puts all of Egypt in total darkness. So there I am with my boils, grasshoppers on my face, no food to eat, sitting in darkness. So after all these plagues, Moses returns to the Pharaoh and he said, had enough? And the Pharaoh, hardened of heart, said, no, I will not let your people go. So Moses said, God has one more plan. And that was to bring everything full circle. So if you remember, the first Pharaoh said, I want all the firstborn male Hebrew children to be killed. And now we're full circle because Moses says, God will send the angel of death for all the firstborn of Egypt. 
And even with this, the Pharaoh says, I will not let your people go. And so this is what happened. God sends the angel of death, but God always has a plan. And so God told Moses, I want you to tell my people that they are to paint with lamb's blood over the doorpost of their house. And this will be my signal to pass over that house so that they might live. And this is where the Jewish people get the Passover that they celebrate each and every year. So after the worst catastrophe that Egypt has ever seen, the Pharaoh finally relents and he just tells Moses, go take your people and just get out of here. And so Moses gathers all the Israelites together and he leads them out of Egypt. Now, while they're going out of Egypt, the Pharaoh now, Again, his heart is hard and he says, I don't have any slaves anymore. My land is laid to waste. I have no livestock. I'm going after Moses. This has to end. And so he sends his whole army after Moses in the desert. Now, by this time, Moses and all of the Israelites are camped on the shore of the Red Sea and they turn around and there is the Pharaoh's army bearing down on them. And they turn to Moses and they say, Moses, look what you've done. You've brought us now to our death. We're trapped by the sea. I mean, the sea is 1400 miles long. There's no escape for us. What are we gonna do? We should go back to Egypt. And Moses turns to God and he says, God, what shall we do? And instantly then a column of fire rises up between the Israelites and Pharaoh's army and it blocks them from coming together. And so the people see this tornado of fire and they say, OK, Moses, that's great. But now what? We're still trapped. But people have to have faith. And Moses stands up on a rock and he calls out to God and he lifts up his staff. And the next thing you know, the Red Sea starts quaking and boiling and rumbling and it begins to split in two. And the people are just totally amazed. Their jaws drop. And once it completely splits open, Moses says to the Israelites, go and cross this river now. And that's what they do. And they move through now this bare spot that God has made to save them. When finally all of the thousands of people cross the Red Sea, this tornado of fire starts to die down. And Pharaoh says, this is my chance. And he commands his armies to go down into the Red Sea. And just as they're in the middle of the sea, God releases the sea and it collapses in on all of these soldiers. And the entire army of Pharaoh is totally destroyed. And by this time, you can see the Pharaoh just saying, not only have I lost now the Egyptian slaves, I've lost my land and I've lost now my entire army. And after that day, Pharaoh chased them no more. So this brings us to a question. Why don't we see those great and powerful miracles today? I mean, Moses brought through the power of God all of these plagues. He split the Red Sea. Why don't we see that? Well, because the greatest miracle of all is God the Father sent his son, Jesus Christ, to save us. Moses saved the Egyptian people. Jesus Christ saved everybody. And even when Jesus was on the cross and they said, show us a miracle, show us that you can save yourself. And what was Jesus's answer? Jesus said to them, do you not think that I could call down a legion of angels and wipe all of you out. No, I'm not going to do that. Because he was the miracle. There was no need now to do the miracles that were done with Moses. 
But now this is not to say that we don't have miracles today. Yes, of course we have miracles, but we don't have those great miracles. Remember, what's the purpose of a miracle? The purpose of a miracle is to show the glory of God and to help strengthen people in their faith. Well, in the old days, they just had the prophets who by their word alone were telling of God's glory. Today, now, we have the Bible, we have scripture, and the Bible, the written word of God, is the most published book on the face of the planet. So everybody can be exposed to the word of God. And that in of itself is a great miracle. I mean, come on, every time you go into a hotel, you open up the drawer, what's there? The Bible. And so now that Moses has saved all of the Israelites, he's done, right? I mean, what more can he do? But that famous movie is not called Moses and the River of Blood. It's called the Ten Commandments. So join us next time for Virtual Sunday School. And remember, like, subscribe, and share our videos.